Little Wednesday, yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. In your play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So here's what you get with your APM kit from Hobby King. This is the HK Pilot. And I plan on using either this or the uh, Mini Pro APM, which uh, basically has the same pinout but a different shape, in the Mini Talon. So I would just want to go over how to set up the wiring on the APM. And then I'll probably do another video on the programming, but we need to cover the wiring first. Don't throw that away, because that's actually your barometer foam. Over here is a schematic that I've done that basically shows the layout of how the entire wiring will be done for the aircraft. Let's start with this set of jumpers right here. You'll see there are three rows of jumpers right here. We need to have that jumper on. So over here on the schematic you can see that this is the external compass jumper. So instead of using the compass on the board we're going to be enabling these pins and using an external compass. Now there's also a GPS in here. Another jumper over here is called JP1. This is the APM right here in the schematic and JP1 is right here and you'll notice I have JP1 off right there and there's a there's a 500 milliamp fuse in there that might blow if you try to run servos off this 5 volts provided by the APM so remove JP1 and we're going to be running the output rail by connecting up a 5 volt UBEC from the main battery here okay I'll turn this around so here is some jumpers for the PPM but uh, this is all taken care of on the board nowadays so that there's a converter in there and you can hook your PPM directly up and on the uh, input pins and I'll show you how to do that. That's so we can use just one uh, servo cable to connect our receiver up to the APM. So we don't need to solder these, don't need to use those. Let's see, okay get it like that. Now these solder lands have to do with a connector that's right on the other side on the front of the board and you can configure these to be either a standard serial port, an I2C port, or an OSD port. But we're not going to be using these anyway. This page in the manual shows how this connector could be used down here by using the jumpers that I showed you on the back of the board. So it could be a regular serial port, an I2C port, or it could be used for an OSD. But we're not going to be using it. And this diagram also shows you where the other connections go. So we have over here is where we're going to be hooking up our telemetry radio and our minimum OSD. And that's with a Y splitter that I showed you earlier. So one plug and the radio and the minimum OSD go on there. And this is the USB port where we can program it, upload the firmware. And over here, I, as I said, that's for the GPS and compass. Then the power module plugs on this connector right here. Now, getting back to this piece of foam. This piece of foam right here is important, so don't throw it away. So when we put our case together, we're going to be inserting that piece of foam right in here. And the reason for that is, let's see if I can get this in focus. You see that little can right there? That's the barometer, and there's two little holes in it. The barometer actually is used for altitude, but it does sense air pressure. But I think it's always a good idea to go ahead and use your barometer foam. And that kind of dampens the effect of any air or wind blowing on it and gives you better readings. And the other thing we want to do is remove this JP1 for our application. Just take that off because it's a little hard to get out when you have the cover on. There we go. Let's check to make sure the button works. Feels like it is. There's enough pressure to push it back up. Okay, let's put the screws in. Okay. We're safe now. It's covered up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be connecting is the power module, which goes to the ESC right here and powers the motor. And then I have, uh, I'll later do this, is solder on the UBEC, which is a 5 volt UBEC. And I may use a JST plug, something like this, so that I can 
connect and disconnect it. But the uh, USB is going to feed the 5 volt rail for the servos and also it's going to feed accessories like the pan tilt servos. Okay, so now let's take a look at that power module. Here it is right here. And you can see I have the cable that comes with it plugged in. So I've got that represented here. We have the, vo the voltage sense, the current sense. And this is the 5 volts coming out to the APM to power the 5 volt bus right in here. And then we have the ground. So that's the wires. But there's actually six of them. Let's go ahead and plug it in. And it plugs in right here into that socket. And there, it's plugged in. And so there's the power module. And the battery goes on this end. And that end feeds the ESC. And I'll probably tap into these wires later to put my UBEC on. And the UBEC will look... You have to purchase this separately, but it'll look something like that. I think I got this one from... Uh, Hobby King, but it, it'll just uh, solder right on there. Like you can take the two wires here and solder them onto there, or you can even solder it directly to the board right here, top and bottom, which, which is how, probably what I'll do later. Next thing we want to do is plug in the GPS POC. Now these two connectors are different, so you really can't go wrong. And there it is. So you can see the I2C port is going to the compass and the GPS port is going to the GPS. And they're both inside this puck. So we've connected up the GPS and compass module on these two pins right here. We've connected up the power module with all its wires, six wires. And now we're working on this cable right here which comes off and feeds the minimum OSD over here and the telemetry radio right here. Now you notice there's four wires for the telemetry radio because it both transmits and receives it's it's a full two-way communications device kinda acts like a wireless serial port or wireless USB port you might say so instead of using the USB port to connect to your computer you could use the radio and plug the other uh, ground radio into your notebook and the radios with this kit both look the same so they have a place to plug in the cable to the APM but they also have a, a place for the USB port to the computer so you can use them for either the ground radio or the air radio let's get our cable plugged in In fact what I'll do is I'll go ahead and plug it into the minimum OSD first here's the minimum OSD and this actually takes the Mavlink information and just displays it on the screen. It does not transmit, transmit anything back to the APM, so therefore it doesn't have a transmit wire. It only has three wires. Just the re wire to receive the signal from the TX going into the RX, and then it has uh, five volts in the middle here and ground. So that's all it is. And you can check that on the back. Make sure the five volts is lined up with the voltage pin right here. So this is a splitter cable and as I showed you on the schematic the radio gets all four wires because it's got an RX and a TX receiving and transmitting. And this is a, 19, a 915 megahertz for the United States. That band is open in the ham band and we can use it. Okay so there we go. Those two are connected together and this plug goes into right here on the APM. There's all the wiring right there. Minimum OSD. And I'm going to do you one step better. I'm going to show you how to hook up the Minimum OSD. Now what you do is get a camera. And this is your common FPV board camera. This one happens to be the uh, Foxier Aero version 3 and it actually has an, an on-screen voltage display you may want to turn that off if you're using this camera but you may want to leave it on too because the uh, the voltage for the main battery that's going to be on this power module 
will be displayed in the MavLink information on your OSD because it's giving that information through the voltage sensor to the APM and it sends it out to the minimum OSD over the MavLink data and the minimum OSD can display it. But what it can't display is the voltage going to the camera. So if you're using uh, a separate battery or you just want to know what's coming off the UBEC uh, going to your camera, you might want to know that voltage too. So you could use the on-screen voltage on one of these to do that. And there's also the RunCam Swift 2 that does the exact same thing and displays a voltage. So that's another option. So you could display your video voltage through the OSD in this camera and your flight battery voltage through the MavLink information coming to this. But let's go ahead and connect the camera. Now if you look at the bottom here, there's an in and an out to this thing. And it's kind of strange, but these three solder lands or solder pins go to these three pins on the bottom and are represented by these circles here. And then these three circles represent these three lands which go to the top pins underneath here. I've got to get the signal the signal wire going to the in pin. So the yellow, the yellow wire here is the signal going to the in pin. So that should get that. And then I'll just plug in my, this would be the video transmitter right there. In this case, it's just going to my computer monitor or a TV if you want to do that through an RCA plug right there so I can see what's on the screen but normally that would go to the video transmitter so now we've got those two plugged in normally there would be voltage coming from your video transmitter to power that side and uh, that's one thing I want to get into the minimum OSD actually has two stages to it this over here where the camera and the video transmitter go is powered by 12 volts normally from your video transmitter so if you don't have 12 volts then you may have to do it a different way maybe power it from this side but this side over here is powered by 5 volts so there's a divide here one side gets 5 volts and one side is getting 12 going through a regulator and then powering the uh, video chip over here so what you can do is you can power one side with 12 volts and one side with 5 volts the other option is there's a couple of jumpers on the bottom you can solder and power the entire thing off the uh, APM, the 5 volts from the APM. If you power both stages that way, then you can't use these pins in the middle, which would normally have 12 volts on them. So you can either remove there's these wires from there, or there's an etch you can cut on the back to separate the 12 volts from the regulator so it's not active anymore. And uh, I'm just, I'm just going to use the uh, two voltage method. I'm going to use this battery here. And I often do this. I use a separate battery for the video because it gives a nice clean signal. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in and see if the minimum OSD comes on. All right, there's the light for that stage. For this stage over here, it's now being powered by 12 volts through a regulator, giving 5 volts to this section. But this section is not powered yet. That'll be powered off the minimum OSD. So let's go ahead and we'll plug a battery in there. And there you can see the light come on for that stage. You can see the light come on on the telemetry radio and the lights flashing on here. You can see the video coming out over here on my monitor. So there's all the things being displayed. And some of it's a little confusing because the uh, minimum OSD hasn't been programmed yet. The camera is putting out its OSD overlaying over the minimum OSD. So there's some stuff going on down here. I'll probably turn off the label that says Fox Ear and turn off the timer. These are both coming from the camera, but leave the voltage on. And then with the uh, configuration tool from the minimum OSD, I'll move some of this stuff around and get it where I want it. But the good news is it's working. Now, if you see these characters 
are sort of like a Venetian blind effect or there's like you can see alternating scan lines and it looks really funny uh, chances are it's just set to the wrong setting either NTSC or PAL and in my case I need NTSC but sometimes they come set to PAL so you see like a line in a space, a line in a space and it'll kind of look like blinds and everything will be stretched out but don't worry about that because that comes later when you configure the minimum OSD and you also see every so often disarm flashes up there and there's uh, a light blinking down here so to me it looks like they've got extra copter loaded on here and not extra plane that's the firmware on the minimum OSD so obviously the minimum OSD needs to be configured firmware loaded and configured in the whole works I'll just go over this one more time though just so you get an idea this over here is actually my easy UHF long-range receiver and you may want to use some other long-range receiver like the Dragon Link or the Open LRS but I wouldn't recommend using something that's only short range if you've got a mini talon because it can get out of range and you'll lose it so I, I would put a long range thing they even got a nano easy UHF out now that you can use it's going to be connecting by PPM through one servo cable to the bus right here and I didn't cover this unfortunately but I will do it now you have to put a jumper right here on the signal pins 2 and 3 to enable PPM mode and then you connect PPM mode right there on pin 1 from pin 1 on the easy UHF or port 1 I should say because there's three pins and uh, I think that's pretty much it there's also the airspeed sensor which I don't have right now but that plugs into these pins right here it's just one servo cable and I'll show you that it's these pins right here if you can see it's the last on this row this this row here is all uh, extra pins that we won't be using except for these last two where we're going to connect the airspeed sensor so you can pretty much ignore those for now and these are the input pins as I showed you on the schematic let's look at the schematic again right here are the input pins output pins are right here that's these pins where the servos are going to go and uh, I think that's pretty pretty much it for the overview I hope that I know it's been kinda long but I just wanted to give an overview of the connections and how they work and because the programming is a whole nother ball game a whole nother video for sure but this will get you started and I hope you enjoyed it and hope it was informational and we'll see you next time. Keep your